This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at BackupBradleyAbove and everything that we're talking about here today. And we got lots to talk about, okay? We're talking about payments, the digital economy, and how the world is responding to the acceleration because of the pandemic and, truthfully, because of the liquidity crisis that existed long before the pandemic got here. So it's twofold. And let's take a look at this stuff. And we're also going to look at the uh, Ripple Q3 report. Really good stuff in that, too. So we're going to look at that. Let's get started this morning. Right now, by the way, Bitcoin, $15,541.73. It's on a tear. And and I saw last night on Twitter or yesterday evening, Max Kaiser, who's a big Bitcoin guy, shout out to him. Uh, he is absolutely excited. So is Barry Silbert. Max Kaiser is saying there is no stop in Bitcoin until we hit $28,000. Whoa. I can already tell you this morning, XRP is at 25 cents, almost 28 cents. So we're going to keep an eye on that because at some point I would expect the rest of the altcoins to respond to that kind of movement from Bitcoin as we saw in 2017, 2018. We'll keep an eye on that moving forward. Let's get started. So we see the unstoppable rise of real-time payments in Asia Pacific uh, in the APAC area. And look, this is not a surprise. The Asian region has been far away more acclimated when it comes to digital payments and the use of their phones and WeChat and WhatsApp and all these different things that they can use. And it's exciting to see that they're pushing the narrative there. Now let's keep going because it broadens out here. Here quickly. We see Avanti got a bank charter here. Shout out to Caitlin Long, who has been a huge advocate out in Wyoming for bringing uh, digital currency. And also, there was somebody recently that won in their election, either in the House of Representatives or Senate. And I think, I can't remember which one it was, but Congress is, is the better way to say it until I figure it out again, because I've forgotten. But the person who won out in that area uh, in the state of Wyoming, I believe it was, uh, is a big Bitcoin holder. So they've been a Bitcoin holder, I believe, since 2013. So, I mean, now you talk about that. That's a van guard right there. Somebody's been in that long. So that's exciting. We see here in the U.S. they are continuing to build out the bank charters for digital assets. And this is really exciting to me because I really don't believe that we're that far away from getting, you know, that last bit of clarity we need to really just kick the log jam open here in the U.S. Now, Coming to this, ACI Real Payments and person-to-person -person will accelerate payments digitization. It goes into this article to also discuss... I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but not only the uh, acceleration in person-to-person -person payments because of the pandemic and everything that people are learning about how to work with their phones and things of that nature to be able to go fully digital, have a digital wallet and these things like that, that we are all well aware of. But it also talks about the ability to go uh, uh, peer to business, right? So person-to-business -business transactions as well. And I think that's the next big push here is to get the merchants really tucked into this so we can really see full circle, not just from my phone to your phone, but from my phone to the merchant, your phone to the merchant, all the way around, not just in some areas, right? We do have that to an extent, but we need to have the kind of uh, integration that we see in other areas, like I, like I just pointed out in the Asian and the APAC area, right? So let's keep this going here because this is interesting. I wanted to point out right while we're here, talking about the whole thing with ACI, I wanted to remind everybody that Ripple Partners, ACI, Worldwide, and Currency Cloud close new big deals. Ripple Partner, AC Worldwide, this was September 9, 2020, the reminder of this here, is helping State Bank of India modernize its payment system and process payments in cryptocurrencies. RippleNet's longstanding member, Currency Cloud, has partnered with Dunbridge Financial to offer e-wallets to customers in over 180 countries. Why do I bring that up? Well, I bring that up because 
it says here, shout out to Michael Bow Five Links and everybody who sent information to us. Uh, even though China remained the largest contributor to the Asian P2P volume, it's about to be surpassed by India. India witnessed tremendous growth in P2P trades in 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to have a new leader in the P2P world, right? And what's interesting about that to me, Ripple partners with AC Worldwide and Currency Cloud, helping the State Bank of India modernize its payment system. However you see it, indirectly or directly, Ripple is helping India move to the front of the line when it comes to P2P volume against China, which has really been the ones out here really pushing this narrative for digital currencies and the use of it and settlement and the whole bit out here beyond everybody else. So this is extremely exciting, and I would expect to see this continue to grow and surpass China just because of the fact that, you know, India just recently kicked their log jam open for their citizens and digital assets and payments and like so this is really exciting now let's shift gears and get to the q q uh the the quarterly report the q3 q3 excuse me uh shout out to dj peter vass xrp's daily volumes increase 105 percent since q2 to ripple and let's keep going because there's another headline here from that report and we're going to look at that report briefly here Cryptic Poet, shout out to you. Ripple says line of credit has been piloted by ODL customers and the initial feedback is overwhelmingly positive. That's what we want to hear. Let's go down into the report a second here because... I'm not going to read the whole thing to you so you can breathe a sigh of relief, but it is a great report. You get those two bullet points from it. The line of credit is being very well received, overwhelmingly positive, right? Companies can use the capital to further invest in their business and to enter markets and reach new customers. You, One thing I did want to highlight about the line of credit, it's not just for making payments. It is also upfront to help accelerate their business performance and scale, that's a big part to understand. So it's a line of credit where you can use to scale and not just a company that needs to make payments. That's a very, very important point I wanted to push home there. As indicated in the Q2 2020 XRP Markets report, Ripple is purchasing. They stay told us this in Q2 now. Ripple is purchasing and may continue to purchase XRP to support healthy markets. This is a near-term product solution for line of credit beta. Long-term, Ripple is building a new ODL capabilities to dynamically source XRP liquidity from the open market, not just Ripple. If, if you don't understand what that means, just quickly, and I, and I pointed this out in Q2, it was a very big uh, uh, statement by Ripple, that they said, we will be purchasing XRP off of the secondary market, which means the exchanges that we buy from, the upholds, the Coinbase's, the Binance's, right? All of these things, all these crypto exchanges that are out here, they're telling you from Q2 that we will be buying off of that secondary market. And that, to me, is a pretty interesting statement because Ripple sees their self clearly decoupled from XRP, and they see their self just as any other customer would that would need to go to the secondary market to be able to get some and bring it to their uh, customers as they need it. Now, one of the things I did want to point out here um, Last quarter, total XRP sales net purchases were $35.84 million uh, versus $32.55 million the previous quarter. Ripple focused solely on its over-the-counter sales and leases. Sales and leases, which means we're leasing it to you, not selling it to you. As a part of providing increased XRP liquidity to certain RippleNet ODL customers to improve the ODL experience, eliminating the need for pre funding and enabling instant global payments similar to recent quarters ripple did not sell programmatically so there you have that the other thing i wanted to point out is that sale and lease okay sales and leases so just know that that they 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 lease it too <laughs> this is interesting what they're building out here it really is now there was another part i wanted to go down here and this is where it is i believe right here yeah so in addition other notable launches include let's take a look at this because 
I find this whole section interesting here in a positive way. Binance launches XRP USD inverse perpetual swap collateralized XRP. On its app, Binance launched XRP call and straddle options long only. And it says, as well as leverage tokens, XRP up and XRP down. What's interesting about that to me is the perpetual swap, right? So that means that it's open-ended. There's no time expiration on that contract right on that particular order and you can leave that open and it's a long only right so you can't short it right so it's interesting to me because what i what i tend to look at that and think very positively i'm the eternal optimist anyway so my thought is is that they're starting to build liquidity for some of these other products on top of the underlying asset this would start to look like how we grow into a mature market and at some point i would expect to see like futures contracts and perpetual swaps and things of that nature get a expiration put to them and they not be open ended and perpetual and at some point have that you know market mature to the next level there now let's move on to this flare announced the flare network announced that the launch of a smart contract platform for xrp through a utility fork and making spark which is flare's token claimable by certain existing XRP holders. This is positive for the XRP community as it allows developers to create smart contracts for new use cases like lending and derivatives extending XRP's utility. Well, this is exciting to me because they're telling you right here that we've just helped create another use case for XRP and give it more utility by working with the Flare network. Now, this to me is exciting because, one, you're talking about the launch of a smart contract platform. And what's interesting to me to that is, is that smart contracts are going to be enormous and already have done very well for Ethereum, excuse me. So Ethereum is really the ones out here just absolutely just crushing the smart contract space all by themselves. They are the leader in the smart contract world. You look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin's looked at as a store of value, right? You look at uh, Ethereum and you look at something that is smart contracts and a network to launch your own token like the ERC-20 tokens. And then you look at uh, XRP and you see the use case utility there, which has not been to its full scale intended use because they've held back the clarity and have not given us the good housekeeping seal that we need to really realize our full use case which is to be a bridge currency to the world for all assets and the expansion of the idea between flare network and what codius can do we can have smart contracts that i believe at some point will end up gutting the ethereum network i really do and remember the flare network has built a two-way bridge between ethereum's network and the xrp ledger so that's another huge positive talking about interoperability it goes next level. So that's where we're at on this day. And I just wanted to get all of that out. Guys, uh, mass adoption is in process here. And it's pretty damn exciting. I can't wait to see what Ripple does next and what XRP does next. But at this point, I would say we can't be far away from getting what we need from not only the U.S., but the international bodies like the G20. I want to remind everybody that later this month, the G20 does meet at their virtual summit and a big bullet point of that conversation will be the digital task force or a digital economy task force and how to make it uh, financial inclusion and to jump to the innovation of finance, new financial payment rails. So very exciting. Can't wait to see what they say. I hope everybody has a wonderful Friday. Make sure you check out the links in the description and the comment section. They're all trusted links. You can absolutely trust those links. And one thing before I get out of here, I wanted to celebrate uh, Sky Drifter 21 who has grandpianos.crypto oh that's a good one guys check out the unstoppable domains link dot cryptos i believe are a new asset class just like dot coms are and you know don't believe it it's still true they are going to make an impact. Uh, I think if we've learned nothing else from this whole uh, watching this election process in the United States unfold, what we've learned is, is that we need to have 
uh, freedom of speech 2.0 in a digital world. And one of the ways to do that is to really have a dot crypto. If you have a dot crypto, you will have what you create on that ledger that can receive payments money transferred to you through that domain dot crypto and whatever you put on that uh that site or that domain and you build off of that will be on an immutable ledger that to me is freedom of speech 2.0 in the digital world and if we've learned nothing else i think we all understand that as we move to this digital space in this digital world that has so many pros we got to make sure that we really work hard to uh understand where we get the best advantages so we don't become muted in this world because it might not be you today and it might not be your opinions today but if you're seeing it happen to somebody else believe me at some point it'll happen to you or i so make sure you check that stuff out and i'll catch all of you on the next one